In November 1989, world governments agreed to adopt the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is a charter of rights drawn up specifically for children. We kids are very happy to be here at this special celebration for the signing of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. For the very first time, a document has been signed giving rights to all children everywhere, regardless of where they come from or what they look like or who they are. This document was drafted to give children the special protection and care they need to grow up healthy and happy. The rights covered in this convention are not only basic ones, such as the right to health care or the right to an education, but also the right of children to speak out and be listened to. There are several provisions for self-expression, which are called children's participation rights, and these are freedom of speech, being able to express ideas and share them with other people, the right to your own opinion, being consulted when big decisions about your life are being made. The right to form your own organizations and get together in groups. The right to receive accurate information and to share it with other children. All around the world, children are taking action and speaking up for themselves. The stories that follow give us a glimpse of what some kids in some places are doing. In South Africa, Children are participating in the creation of a new post-apartheid society. Children have long played a key role in the painful history of South Africa. Mass demonstrations by kids in 1976 unleashed a demand for change which swept through the rest of society, leading finally to the release of Nelson Mandela in 1990 and the start of talks about constitutional change. In 1992, as the political struggles continued, 200 children from all regions of the country came together for a summit conference in Cape Town. Their goal was to create a charter of children's rights, which would be seriously considered in the drafting of the new constitution. Considering the fact that uh, South Africa didn't sign the UN Declaration on Children's Rights, it is nice to know that finally, eventually, children will have rights that will protect them from abuse, child labor, and most importantly, those rights will be drawn up from the children's point of view. Previously, the children of South Africa had moved society forward by defiance and protest. This time, they were taking steps towards a new politics of democracy. Friends, this is what we are hoping to accomplish when this weekend is over. We are going to discuss, listen to different suggestions, and draw up a charter which will be our own and we will be able to identify with it. This meeting gave a rare opportunity for children to learn what it means to be a delegate and to represent other people. Uh, representing all the children back home makes me feel very, very proud. I mean, I got the chance to come. That's why I think I'm going to do my best to, you know, I'm speaking for them, so I have to do my best, because I want the best for them. In order to draw up a charter of rights, the children worked out their ideas by meeting in small group workshops. The relationship between parents and children should be like friend to friend. You know. The themes they were addressing were family life, health and welfare, violence, child labor, homelessness and education. Sometimes they prepared a song on those themes. Sometimes they prepared a play. By working through artistic forms, the kids were able to express their ideas and feelings. A major focus of concern at the summit was education. Some poor teachers get no pay. Some teachers get no pay. Let the children roam around all day. We love you, teachers. We love you, teachers. Please stop beating us. Please stop beating us. We love you, teachers. We love you, teachers. Please stop beating us. Please stop beating us. La, la, la.
because I've been in a favorable position in the apartheid system, I wasn't really uh, affected by the education system or whatever. But um, what the workshops have done is um, they've actually highlighted the, 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 the plight of the black child in school and all the grievances that they have with education. And that has made me sympathize and all my fellow colleagues sympathize with them. And um, it's given us this driving force to wanting to actually uh, uh, get them on an equal basis with us. Peace in the hood, peace in the neighborhood. Children starving, children dying, never had a chance, bustle about it. Children need to get education. Some parents was the children in school, they run away and they die. All we need guys, we got you. Help the children, help, 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 help the children. Peace. Yeah. Let's show the motto made of uh -huh. to the South African government. We want freedom. The children need freedom. It's our lives, not their lives. So yeah. we want the free compulsory education. Everything that we, what we say we'll get to the conclusion here must be put in the Bill of Rights for the future. Yeah, the, the future is ours. We are the leaders of this country in the Don't next few years. The adults and the government are involved and they should listen to us when we tell them what we want, like education, yeah. facilities. They're not that all the white children get everything. The, the South Africa is ours, not doesn't belong to an individual, it belongs to all of us, all the people who in, yeah. inhabit this country. Yes. yes, exactly. Do you think that coming along has made any difference to what yes, you think? Yes, to express yes. our feelings. Oh, feelings. Yeah. Yeah, we express feel free. Yeah. Feel free, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, the you time inside. has changed. A uh, long time ago, you know, the people used to be afraid to express their feelings. Yeah. Now the time is We're going. Given an opportunity, you know, yeah. Given an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. and, and, we're going yeah, and how everything. Does that make you Feel. Great, Ooh. great, Makes and important good. too. And we feel we killed uh, uh, the uh, the people care for us now. <laughs> With newfound confidence from the process of working together, the children produced a detailed charter of children's rights to present to political leaders and other adults. But they realized it was only the beginning. Uh, when I leave this conference, I hope to tell the people in my region, the children, as well as the public in general, about what has been happening here and what we, the children, want. We, we go, I think we're going to carry on. I think we're going to carry on with this even day in Transkai because I don't think that you're going to speak once and then the government will hear us and everything will stop. We're going to continue. When we come here, it's like we broke all the barriers of color, religion, sex and age and that. And I hope we'll be able to set an example for the future children and even the adults. The Convention on the Rights of the Child says that children should be able to obtain and share information that is important for their well-being and healthy development. When it comes to the question of AIDS, this provision is absolutely vital. important that you know how you can put yourself at risk for contracting HIV, which is the virus that causes the disease AIDS. We put ourselves at risk when we have unprotected sexual intercourse and sharing needles. 
Krista Blake has visited nearly 200 schools across America in the last two years to give talks to teenagers about AIDS. What I want for you is for you to have information that I never had for whatever reason, because they didn't know, because the school didn't want to tell us, whatever. I don't know why I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. Okay. But I don't want that to happen to you. And I want you to use the information that you have when you make your choices. I am the perfect example of what happens when you make the wrong choice. I'm gonna die. Okay. Why? Because I had sex. I'm protected. Krista got the HIV virus from a boyfriend when she was 16 years old. He was a hemophiliac and had contracted the virus through a contaminated blood transfusion. He had not informed Krista that he was infected. I guess I decided to be outspoken because nobody else was speaking anything at all, whether it was loud or soft, at least not from my perspective. They get it more with me, you know, because I was doing the same things that they're doing now. But stop and think. If you have had a sexual relationship, how many times did you leave yourself unprotected? It is definitely, definitely far wiser to use a latex condom than not to. Krista's talk, which always because includes discussion with the group, covers the facts about AIDS and the personal experience of living with it. The sharing of information is not unique to her or to the United States. As AIDS threatens to take the lives of more and more children, a growing number of teenagers all around the world are now working as educators. Obviously, education is a method of prevention. Because if you know about it, you're going to know that you don't want to get this disease, and you're going to do everything that you can to not get it. OK, education. <coughs> Secondly, we have the golden guarantee, which is what I call it, which is abstinence. <coughs> No sex. I speak to teenagers because nobody spoke to me. You know, basically, I don't want anybody else to die from ignorance. By the time I leave, they're looking real hard at the things they've done. And they're thinking real hard about the things that they're going to do because they don't want to be me. Chris acted on her own initiative to share health information among her peers. With encouragement from adults, younger children are able to adopt a similar approach, taking action to improve their own neighborhood, wherever that might be. In Liverpool, Great Britain, children at a primary school have been involved in a pilot health program called Child to Child. This is an approach to health which turns education on its head and makes children the educators amongst themselves and their community about all sorts of issues, from diet to smoking to environmental hazards. It's an idea which has been working in 70 different countries all over the world. Children are the same worldwide. We have different health needs in the UK to children in Uganda or to children in New Delhi, but the approach um, means that children can improve their own health in their own community no matter what the health needs are. The way they've done it here is um, to go out and look at the neighbourhood. They assessed what the problems were and then they went about with the help of, obviously with adults, um, making decisions about the things that they could do to make some changes and they've successfully got people interested from the local council in the community and changes have been made or are going to be made. The kids focused on one of their play areas, known as the ratty because of its neglect, and also on such things as dog mess and litter. 
They took these things up with the local council by contacting its environmental officer, Paul Hornch, who is a link person with the community on environment issues. Right, so, so you divided into groups and then you went out and did your survey to see what sort of problems you had to deal with. That's a good way to start, really, isn't it? We got, like, loads of work done out of it. Yeah. And we, we took some photos. Right. Yeah. Should we have a look at the photographs as well? Somebody's food. Somebody's food that's just been thrown down. And here you um, see, even when you've got bins, this one. I think it's, it's an excellent idea. I think it's a good idea of getting people, like chill, young children and other people, like councillors and all that, you know, getting together and cooperating. You've all done a bit, a bit of a bit of work on the ratty, I believe. I don't know. I, you, know, you made a couple of phone calls to my office to to remind me to look into the ratty, to find out a little bit about its future, and to see who who was responsible for that land and what was going to happen to that area. And I, it was a bit more of a task than I anticipated at first, but eventually I found out some of the answers. And the area known as the Ratty is actually being sold for development and 22 semi-detached houses are going to be built on that area, um, equipped with gardens. So I'd, what are your views about that? Is, that? is that good news? Anybody? Yes? Well, it's better than being what it is now because it's a very dangerous area. And the children had many ideas about cleaning up their neighbourhood and educating people. For instance, they designed a leaflet to hand out to area dog owners, explaining the serious health risk from dogs. Paul Hornch liked this idea so much, he hopes to mass produce it for distribution throughout the community. A good way of helping him. Dog mess can be an eyesore in more ways than one, as the children discovered in their health project. It's possible to catch a disease from dog mess which can cause blindness. This generated a session of designing pooper scoopers to combat the problem of dog poop on their school grounds. Leaflets. I would love, yeah. Thank you. It's about not letting your dog foul where children play so they can go blind or get diseases. Yeah. Would you like to have one of our poop scoopers? Just in case your dog does foul in our school field, you can scoop it up. Okay, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> This is a way of developing links with parents through child to child, through children becoming interested in health issues, through becoming empowered and taking messages home and parents becoming interested. And the empowerment is, is giving the children um, a kind of inner strength through developing their self-esteem. It makes you want to wake up every morning and run dash to school because, you know, like, like you might have something good until it, Mr Horn's coming in. Feel more in control Anybody? and yes. important. Whereas before that, I just thought I was a kid and you know I wasn't important to nobody. But and I think I'm important. The Convention on the Rights of the Child states that children have the right to form associations, which means the freedom to meet together in groups to discuss any issues of importance. In Brazil. Children are organizing to bring an end to violence and abuse of basic human rights. All around the world, poverty is causing more and more children to spend their childhood working and living on the streets. Some may be sent to work there by their parents. Others end up running away and living full time on the streets. This life is very dangerous, full of violence and drug addiction. And in Brazil, some street children end up being killed. There are so many children dying around here. 
for nothing, just for petty crime like stealing a watch. But there is no reason for someone to take away the life of a child. Instead of killing the child, he should be taken to the police station or to the children's judge and see what can be done. But no, if the child runs, they shoot bullets here. It is unhuman. Something like this shouldn't happen. In response to the violence and murder of street children, there has been a rising tide of pressure by many people in Brazil to get the basic human rights of children respected. This has meant a radical change in the law concerning juvenile offenders and the treatment of children picked up by the police for being on the streets. In this long process of getting the law changed, children have played a key role. With the help of adults, they created their own organization, the National Movement of Street Boys and Girls. At their first meeting in 1988, they discussed how the law relating to children should be changed. In 1989, they came together again to hold a second meeting. My name is Idavo Samuel and I come from the city of Santarém in Pará. Our concern here at the second national meeting of the street children's movement is to protest about violence. This is talked about a lot by the kids, I mean, but society isn't doing anything yet. I hope that by debating this here, when this meeting is over, we will have convinced the authorities to believe us and to recognize we exist, that we do have rights and that we are Brazilian citizens too. In the Northeast, our biggest problem is the death squads and the police. The death squads are assassins who get money to kill our street children. Society sees us as dope smokers, thieves, glue sniffers, and for this we are dying. But this is wrong. We aren't marginals, we are marginalized. My name is Nete. I represent the delegation from Para. People, the violence in Para is terrible. We are raped by the cops and others. When we are selling things on the streets, the cops come, they take us away, and they beat us. They tell us to have sex with them, and they threaten us with guns. They don't care if we are boys or girls. All they want is to beat us up and to satisfy their desire. Porque nós temos direito à vida. Nós somos seres humanos. Nós também sentimos a humilhação. Nós também sentimos a repressão. Tá? Já chega. Vamos mostrar para eles que nós estamos mais fortes, mais unidos do que nunca, porra. The second street children's meeting was actually run by the children themselves. The presence of adults was only necessary to help with those things they couldn't resolve themselves. And the meeting was all about putting on pressure and getting publicity so that the children's law, which is based on consultation with kids, would get passed. And this second meeting was an opportunity for children to go to the National Congress and talk to the deputies and senators in order to get their approval of the law. And we succeeded on October 12th, which is a very important date for all Brazilian children. It was because children themselves participated that Brazilian law was finally changed to establish proper legal and civil rights for children and adolescents. By getting organized, by going in to speak face-to-face -face with the politicians, 
Brazilian street kids have set an example which has since been followed very successfully in places such as the Philippines and in Kenya. Previously, children's projects were done on behalf of the child, rather than with the child. They were from the top down. Today, no. Today, children are taking charge of directing their own lives. This is what participation means. All children have something to say about their lives and the world around them. Some children speak with a grace and power that can't be ignored. At the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, many children voice their concerns about the future of the world. A plea for development in poor countries and for peace was made by 11-year-old Saida Azorio from Guatemala. La construcción de escuelas en todo el país, construcción de hospitales, centros de salud y clínicas dentales debidamente equipadas, programas intensivos de alfabetización, porque un país que se libera de las cadenas de la ignorancia es un país que va hacia el progreso. Necesitamos educación para que haya un cambio en nuestra gente y así lograr una Guatemala mejor. Otro tema que a nosotros los niños nos preocupa mucho y que no nos permite desarrollarnos de manera mejor es la paz. Nosotros los niños estamos cansados de ver tanta violencia. Ya no queremos más guerra. Queremos paz, fraternidad y unidad entre todos los seres humanos. Por favor, desde el cuenta de lo que están haciendo con nuestro mundo. Nos están dejando un mundo lleno de maldad, un mundo tan malo que nosotros los niños estamos tan tristes. En realidad da pena. Dios nos dejó un mundo tan lindo para que nosotros en realidad así lo arruinemos de un lugar a otro. No, no es justo. Démonos cuenta de lo que estamos haciendo, por favor. Démonos cuenta. Así dejarles un mundo mucho mejor sin estos problemas que continuamente están afectando al ser humano. Muchas gracias. Children's participation is about having a voice and being listened to. It's about consultation and shared decision-making with adults and with other children. Participation is a process that can work in any community and in all settings, from the family to the school, from the neighborhood to the nation. And when the raised voices of children are truly heard, the world may have grown up a little more 